You're listening to Lifestyle Locker Radio, episode 009, with Dr. Eric Plasker. We are the first generation in history that is getting this advance notice that whether we like it or not, want to or not, we're probably going to live longer than we ever thought. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh, and welcome to the Lifestyle Locker Radio, where we dive into what makes an awesome lifestyle. From relationships to money mindset, nutrition to fitness, emotional health to peak performance, we bring you on an amazing journey to unleashing your human potential. So here's a little bit about Dr. Plasker. He's an international best-selling author of The 100-Year Lifestyle and The 100-Year Lifestyle Workout. Dr. Plasker has trained over 6,000 doctors around the world, not just in the States, around the world, on his methods and his health and wellness message reaches millions of people each year. He has been a practicing chiropractor for 31 years, even though he looks like he's 29. He's been married to his amazing wife, Lisa, for 29 years, who is a really awesome person. I know her personally as well. Uh, And she's an amazing photographer and chef. And all three of the Plasker kids are becoming chiropractors. So they're all following in his footsteps and and leading people to true health. So Dr. Plasker, welcome. I'm very grateful and happy to have you with us. Well, it's a pleasure, young man. It's great to be with you. I'm so proud of the work that you're doing and the difference that you're making, and uh, I love this. Awesome. So we, you had a big story, a very big story uh, about many different things here, but I want to start, you know, the evolution of, of the 100-year lifestyle is a really neat evolution, and, and I want to hear your backstory. Where did it come from? Like, these people that are listening, the audience that's listening, Definitely wants to know, wow, this, this guy's got this thing, 100-year lifestyle. What does that mean, and where did it come from? Yeah, great question. And, uh, and you know, I love the whole backstory thing. And as a chiropractor for 31 years, back when the 100-year lifestyle was born, I had no idea that it was going to be the 100-year lifestyle. Uh, you know, like you, being a chiropractor, helping so many people, kids, families, athletes, and uh, never even could imagine that the 100-year world would pop into my life. And one day, out of nowhere, a 98-year-old man, walks into my office, crippled, broke, and alone. He was suffering, uh, broke my heart. Uh, You know, you talk about human potential. Uh, Certainly, we share that passion tremendously. It's what, you know, everybody's story should be a human potential story. And, you know, I looked at this guy, this 98-year-old man, crippled, broken, alone, and realizing that this is not a human potential story. This is a story of suffering and tragedy. And he asked me, like so many of our patients ask us all the time, you know, Dr. Plasker, can you help me? And I'm thinking to myself, I have no freaking idea. I mean, I've I've never even seen a 98-year-old man before. Kids, yes. Families, yes. Athletes, yes. All the time. 98? Come on. So I said to him, like many of our mentors have said to us over the years, uh, I said, Max, I have no idea. But as long as you're alive and breathing and there's life flowing over your nervous system, let's give it a shot. So I started to work with him and give very gentle adjustments. And wouldn't you know it, this 98-year-old man starts waking up. The pain lines start to leave his face. He starts to walk with a little more pep in his step. His 100-yard dash definitely improved probably by (laughs) five times faster. He was moving like a 100-year-old, a 98-year-old racehorse at the time. He's going really fast. I don't know if he was running triathlons yet, but he was certainly on his way. And so months goes by. He's doing fantastic. I see him driving all over town. Uh, We fell in love with this guy, Josh, just like you and I have a connection, and maybe many of our listeners will all have a connection after this called this there was a spiritual connection with this guy we fell in love with him and uh we took care of him fed him (laughs) just really adopted him and then a year goes by he's 99 years old and he had said to me so many times along the way thank you dr plasker thank you shaking my hand waving at me in the streets when he's walking down peach tree road and and then 99 years old a year goes by something happens that never happens before max misses an appointment. Well, we were surprised. So we try to call him, no answer on the phone. We, I send my assistant to his home, no answer at the door. So he's 99 years old. What do you think we're thinking? Yeah, not around. Yeah, he passed. So we say a little prayer for Max, say goodbye, and go about our business. Well, another year goes by. Max is now over... 100 years old, 
And guess who comes walking through the front door of the office one day without an appointment? Go yeah. ahead, guess. You'll get it right. Yeah, yeah it's Max. It's Max, right? It's yeah. Max. So I'm in the back. I'm adjusting people, and I'm clearing out the, you know, taking care of people. And uh, my assistant screams out like she's seeing a ghost. Max, oh, my God, Max, oh, my God. I'm in the back. I only know one Max. So I'm like, Max, Max is here. And so I start adjusting a little faster, clearing out the rooms a little faster and walk around to the front. And there's Max. And I looked at him, this beautiful soul. I look at him and he looks up at me and he looked, Josh, Dr. Josh, he looked tired. He yeah. looked like a man who was ready to go. His eyes were hollow. His bones were protruding out of his face. Uh, he had a tear coming down his cheek. And I said, Max, oh, my God. He's now 100 years old. I said, Max, where have you been? We've missed you so much. And he looked up at me. And like he had done so many times before, he grabbed me. Thank you, Dr. Plasker. Thank you. And died. Holy cow. Right there in the reception room. Well, that had never happened to me before. Our office was always filled with life and energy and hope and healing and wow. fun and performance. Wow. And and so I tried to revive him, obviously. Uh, call 911. The ambulance comes, takes him away, never to be heard from again. Except for the fact that I couldn't get it out of my head. That if Max had known that he was going to live to be 100 when he was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or even 80 years old. Oh, yeah. How would he have lived his life differently so that he didn't get there crippled, broken, alone? And so that intrigued me. And I did some research, started asking lots of questions about longevity and performance for a lifetime, and the 100-year lifestyle was born. Wow. What a story. Yeah, what it changed story. my life. And at the time, I didn't know how to make sense of it because, you know, back then I was a young buck, you know, in my uh, probably late 20s, early 30s and didn't know what to make sense of it all. And I started asking people that question. Hey, if you knew you'd live to be 100, how would you change your life? And the answers that I got were all across the board. People would say to me, Dr. Josh, they would say to me, what are you kidding me, Dr. Plasker? Grandma's 87. She doesn't even know me. If I get like that, shoot me. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing yeah. it. I'm not doing it. I hear that, too. Yeah. And, uh, and, and other people would say, you know what? That would be really cool. Man, I'd love to be hold a triathlon world record at 100 years yeah. old, and I'd like to run a marathon at 100 years yeah. old and break a record or ride a bike. And, you know, uh, and just so it was intriguing and exciting. And then we learn, as you now are aware of, as one of our doctors that teach and preach and give the care that is uh, around this message, is that 100-year-old people are the world's fastest growing group, and we're the first generation in history getting this advance notice. So listen up, my fellow locker people. We got a lot of work to do and a lot of things to think about. Yeah. So here, here's another. So this is good. So the, the story is intense. I mean, I'm, I'm sure nobody's ever heard a story like that before. Nobody. No chiropractor, maybe. Um, definitely not someone who's not a practicing chiropractor. The public. I mean, I, I'm a practicing chiropractor. I've never had a story like that in my life. It, yeah, it's, it it's interesting. Well, listen, but here's what we all have in common. Everybody has aging parents and grandparents. Yes. So what's interesting for all of our listeners on the phone, if you're a, a runner or a, a CrossFit person or a marathoner or a casual workout person and you just like to be fit and healthy, here's the thing that is very important that you consider is that we are the first generation in history that is getting this advance notice that whether we like it or not, want to or not, we're probably going to live longer than we ever thought. Uh, most of us that are paying attention here today have aging parents or grandparents. Maybe we've recently lost an aging parent or grandparent. Uh, we look at that older generation and we say, wow, I don't want to be like that for many of us. But here's what is really important, Dr. Josh, and to all of our listeners at the Lifestyle Locker, is that none of these people plan to live this long. It is their, we call it in the 100-year lifestyle second edition, we call it innate life expectancy. It is your innate life expectancy. It is from the moment of conception when your egg cell and sperm cell came together and certainly you weren't paying attention in that moment, you were just <laughs> multiplying cells, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and at that moment of conception, you had a blueprint that was designed to live 80, 90, 100 years and beyond as long as there was no interference 
and there was no destructive force that cut your life short along the way. And so because we're getting this advance notice, this generation that their life expectancy when they were born was only 50 years. It's a generation that's outliving their scientifically predicted life expectancy yeah, by two, three, four, five decades. So we, it's important that we look at our seniors, these beloved people, and think not like, I don't want to be like that. But think about it from the perspective of, wow, I have those genes. How can I live my life differently so that I don't get there crippled, broken, alone, but that I get there in style with health and vitality and energy and purpose and passion and human potential expressing it every day, every year of my life? Yeah, so it, that's, that's neat. So I have, you know, in, in our practice and in life and friends I have, um, I hear, you know, like, live like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Right, like, right. I, you know, I have a pretty active lifestyle from running to lifting weights to crazy skiing, and um, I, hey, I enjoy I'm with my you, lifestyle. Man. Right, I'm with you. Crazy right. skiing. Yeah, I'm with you. I know. So, so this is my lifestyle. I love it, but I also understand, you know, the philosophy that we are going to live, or the philosophy, the science that we are going to live well into into these late years. You know, possibly over a hundred. Right. So, yeah. um, what do we what do we tell, you know, my friends? The people that are listening, listen, I know we want to live an awesome, intense, fun, exciting lifestyle, um, but you don't have to live like, you know, maybe tomorrow's your last day. You know, it's a great question. And to all of Josh's friends, Dr. Josh's <laughs> friends, and to all of our friends at the Lifestyle Locker and all of my friends, uh, I hear it all the time. It's funny that you ask it that way, that, uh, hey, if you only had 24 hours to live, you know, what would you do if you only had 24 hours to live? Well, I would bungee jump. Well, okay, so now you survived that one. Okay, now what would you do? You have another 24 hours to live. I'd travel to the Himalayas. Okay, great, now you survived that one. And then what would you do if you only had 24 hours to live? Well, I'd sprint from here to across the Atlantic Ocean, you know, and, and, like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. and the list goes on and on and on. But here's what happens. You could do that for a week, a month, a year, three years, maybe five years, or a decade before you wake up one day underneath a bridge, eating out of a garbage can, crippled on a cane, <laughs> and not being able to function. Because what ends up happening at some point, you will have a wake-up call that gets you to realize that you have to find some balance, and you have to start thinking long-term. And I believe that's what is so unique and special about the 100-year lifestyle. It's not about compromising in the moment. It's about finding the ultimate balance of time, that need for immediate gratification, as well as to be am, being able to enjoy things that you love over the course of your entire lifetime. I mean, we see a lot of runners, we see a lot of athletes and people that are going for it in so many ways in their life. And if it, when they're having this realization, they're not, thankfully, not dead. They have the realization that, you know what? Man, my knee doesn't work anymore. Does that mean I'm gonna have to stop running? But I wanna keep running. How do I find this balance? What do I have to do differently? Or you know what, my back is tight. Or you know what, my, I'm eating too much. And, you know, and th at some point, there's a wake up call that gets you to realize that you have to find that balance. And I think that's what's special about the 100 year lifestyle, helping people find that balance, achieving that ultimate balance in your lifestyle so that you enjoy the moment and can do it for the long haul. Yeah, that's, I mean, so the key is balance, really, right? And, it and, is. And something you taught me, and I use this in practice, and now I use this in life. Um, and I want you to expand a little bit on it for our listeners. Um, you taught me these, these three things, or excuse, one thing broken into three pieces, right? We have prime time. We have prep time and we have play time. Share us. I, and people have never heard this. Explain what that means and, and yeah, how people we call can apply it, it. Cool. Well, we call it in the 100-year lifestyle, we call it quality time living. It's prime time, prep time, and play time. Prime time is when you're focused on uh, doing the things that you love in your work so that you have meaningful work, passionate work, productive work, uh, money-generating work that can help you finance the lifestyle that you want to live. Playtime is the things that you do for enjoyment. Maybe it's 
doing athletic activities, maybe it's traveling, maybe it's enjoying good food and spending quality time with the people that you love and your friends and your family and you care about. Uh, and then uh, maybe it's drawing or painting or whatever it is that is gives you passion in a play, from a playtime perspective. And then the prep time, that's that piece where you organize yourself for the ultimate prime times and the ultimate play times. And finding that ultimate balance is really important. And, you know, we, there's a concept, and this is really important, I think. Uh, there's a, um, a line in the 100-year lifestyle that is really meaningful to people that are looking to make some of these changes that we're talking about. And it goes like this. That your innate intelligence, your body's innate intelligence, it's inborn organization, it's inborn genius, your body's innate intelligence will organize around the thoughts that you think, the choices that you make, and the lifestyle that you live. So let me give you an example. As you look for and search for the ultimate balance in time, when you, let's say you decide that you want to, um, you want to lose weight. Well, your innate intelligence will organize around that. If you change your diet, you change how you eat, you change your nutrition, you start exercising, your body will organize around that and you become more fit. On the other side of the coin, let's say you weren't paying attention and you were overeating and not exercising very much at all. Well, your body's innate intelligence organizes around that because it starts to store all the excess food as fat. It thinks you're gonna be hibernating for a few months and so it stores all the food as fat. Your innate intelligence it organizes around the thoughts that you think, the choices that you make, the food choices that you make, and the lifestyle that you live, which is totally different, Dr. Josh, as we know. If you didn't have that innate intelligence and you overate, your body would just explode. Your blood and guts would end up all over the walls yeah. because you took in more than your body can adapt to, right? Yeah. So your body has that ability to organize. When you uh, when you decide that you want to work out and you want to train for a marathon, you say, you know, I've never done a marathon before, or you tr want to train for a triathlon, or you want to train for a 10K, or you want to train for a Tough Mudder, or you go to a CrossFit gym, or maybe you want to do some other form of exercise, Pilates, yoga, Pilates, whatever it is that is enjoyable for you. Well, your innate intelligence will organize that, around that. And if you pay attention to it and you listen to your body. As you look for that balance, hey, I'm training too much. I need to cut back. I need to change my style of training. I need to eat a little bit differently to support my training. Your innate intelligence will organize around that. And if you're if you listen to your body and your patient in the process, you will be amazed at we talk about in the lifestyle locker human potential. Come on, you'd be amazed at what your human potential really is. Yeah, you just you just really explained uh, my past six to eight weeks of my life right there, uh, <laughs> transitioning and deciding to do a marathon, like you just mentioned, um, and and what you what innate desires, what your what your body desires, you know, going from eating, I eat pretty good, I say pretty good, you know, I do have my cheat days, I'm a human pretty, human being like the rest of us, but. When I started to put, I cheated with you in Italy, actually. <laughs> oh, it was very. The gelato was amazing. It was so good. Um, so you know, doing my, doing this running, and as, as my mileage is increased and my weight training is increased, and these things are changing, like you said, your your body and your intelligence is going to tell you you need more of X, more of Y. Um, and the days that I've, you know, not listened. Not not the smartest idea, but I didn't listen. I had something else. The next day of training. After having that cookie or whatever it may have been, my body let me know. You know, it's like okay. And and for the past, I'd say five weeks, four or five weeks, I've been listening like I've never listened before. Um, and just from a physical standpoint, an endurance standpoint, I've never put as much mileage on my feet, and I feel awesome. So th that yeah. intelligence, is amazing. and my body is actually like transforming. Like it's, and I'm almost, I'm almost forty. My body probably looks the best it has. Ever. And it's crazy. Yeah. And you know as well as I do that if you don't listen, your innate intelligence will talk louder. Yes. And then if you still don't listen, it will give you a radical wake up call. Yeah. It will say, no, 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 you're not listening. So I'm just going to stop you dead in your tracks. Yeah. And if it's not dead in your tracks, it'll stop you in your tracks by blowing out a knee or blowing out your back or having a digestive. Uh, breakdown or a cardiovascular breakdown that ends up becoming a problem because, you know, there used to be a saying that I think many of our parents and grandparents and great grandparents used to say, 
And the saying went like this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm, scary here, saying. <laughs> it's a scary saying. What's interesting about that saying is, is that that generation defined broke as serious life-threatening disease, severe excruciating pain, and that's how they define broke. Yeah. Being uh, incapacitated, mm -hmm. that's how they define broke. In the 100-year lifestyle, going back to that B word, that balance word, mm -hmm. we define broke differently. We define broke when you're out of balance, you're broke. Yeah. So you and I know as chiropractors, uh, taking care of people proactively, health conscious, certainly we have so many people that did have that philosophy, it ain't broke, don't fix it. They come in broke and certainly we can help them because their body adapts and they heal and they get amazing results. Uh, but we also have athletes that maybe they did have a, an overuse type of injury that's really not about overuse. It's about being out of balance. Yeah. It's about mm -hmm. a compromise in nerve function. And so our generation is learning, uh, especially those that are under lifestyle care and performance-based care like we see in our practices, is that these are people that they realize that, you know what, when I'm out of balance, I'm broke. So why not just stay in balance on a regular basis and make that a lifestyle Yeah. so that I can perform and enjoy my highest level of function and performance for a lifetime? Yeah, this is, this is neat. So as, as I'm listening, you know, uh, you know, absorbing all this stuff, taking notes, I also get to look at your background, your backdrop, which nobody's going to be able to see right away. I mean, You're not talking her. about my hair, right? No, You're no, not, not your hair, not your hair. hair. We're going to okay. surprise everybody with your cool haircut. Okay, um, but you have you have some you have some uh, uh, framed pictures behind you, uh, some artwork, and one that's directly behind you says your essential innervation. Yes, and um, you know I have that in my practice as well, and th there's another one that says you know a fitness right. Yes, and uh, with an N squared in there, like a little too like actually squared uh, uh, squaring a number, so. As you talk about fitness and lifestyle and movement and nervous system and all these things that may be a semi new concept to a lot of people, um, I know everybody's heard of a chiropractor, um, and but the hundred year lifestyle, you know, I'm hoping that this is reaching tons of people that have never heard of the book, even though it's been a New York Times bestseller. Um, give us a little bit break. I mean, break down that that poster, the the essential innovation or, or the fitness uh, concept. Because I think to the people that are listening that have very active lifestyles already, I think that will hit home uh, for people, um, especially the fitness one, right? Because I know people, have, whether they're out of shape um, and listening to the podcast and really want to hone in and, and, and oh, gain, gain their life back because they've had that crisis, right? They've had that like their, their innate was knocking. Let, come on, come on. Yeah, and they you know, didn't listen. And they didn't listen. Yeah. Throw or them. or or they listened, but they didn't know what to do about it. They didn't know exactly. the actions to take that would support them, not just for immediate gratification in the moment to feel differently, but to, to make choices that were going to support them long term functioning at a very high level. A hundred percent. Exactly. So go for it. I'm gonna, I want to let you just kind of expand on it, even though people don't have a visual of this poster. Kind of just. It's OK. I'm going to I'm going to paint some word pictures. Beautiful. OK, I'm ready. All right. So let's start talking about the essential innovation and nerve supply. Uh, and then we're going to talk about fitness, which is the acronym for fitness that I think every single one of you, if you enjoy the things that you enjoy and you don't want to do them for a week or a month or a year, but you'd like to enjoy them in some capacity for the rest of your life, then this conversation becomes very important. And let's start with the essential innovation. Uh, your body, everything in your body is controlled by your nervous system. Uh, muscle people and workout people, uh, they like to think that muscles are everything. But the truth is that muscles are attached to bones and they're controlled by nerves. And if it wasn't for the nervous system, muscles just hang out and they just depend on nerve supply in order to function. So your nervous system is extremely important. Your nerves control your heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, stomach, everything. Wiggle your fingers, your toes, your hair standing up on your head if you have hair on your head. Uh, Everything is controlled by your nervous system. If you start exercising and you start to go out for a run or a bike ride, your heart rate starts to go up. It's not because of your muscles. Your nervous system, you start to run and move. Your cells start to get void of oxygen because they're working harder. It sends a signal to your nervous system back to your body that says, hey, heart, beat faster. I need oxygen. 
So it starts circulating. Everything is controlled by the nerves. You drink your shake, you eat your protein bar, you eat your vegetables, whatever it is. Well, what happens with all that stuff? It doesn't just sit in your stomach. Your stomach expands because there's food in there. It sends a signal to your brain, back to your body and says, yo, we need some acid. We need to digest the food. We need to break it down. We need to distribute the nutrients to all the cells. And all of that is triggered by your nervous system. So your nervous system controls everything. We call it essential innervation, and it's your body's natural IT system. So we all know what an IT system yeah. is. Hey, we're on Skype right now, right? Yeah, it's an IT an system. IT system. IT yeah. system, right? You got your internet, phone, and you got uh, you know, your Wi-Fi. That's all a big, giant IT system. Well, your nervous system is your body's IT system. It communicates with every cell, tissue, and organ. Now, it's the communication pathway. So without it, without your IT system at all, life is not possible. Just like without your IT system and your phone, communication is not possible. So without it in your body, your heart doesn't work right, your lungs don't work right, your stomach, legs, liver, kidneys, feet, fingers, nothing works at all. It's like a paralytic injury, somebody that gets paralyzed. You cut the nerve, nothing works. That's what happens without it without your IT system. Now, if there's interference to it, your natural IT system, health is not possible. Nothing works the way that it's supposed to. So the communication, Dr. Hant, is not the way, and because your word, no idea what I'm saying, because there's interference to the communication and I was playing with you as an yeah, audience yeah, yeah. and you're thinking, what's going on? What's going on? There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Well, that's how your body works when there's interference. The messages don't go through the way that it's supposed to. So you may think you're having an overuse syndrome when the reality of it is you probably have some type of interference in the neurology within your body. And so if there's interference, nothing works the way that it's supposed to. When people get a subluxation in their body, what you and I work with all the time, correcting interferences in the spine and the nervous system and the brain and how it works and communicates. This is what we deal with, this is what we correct. And then the pathway starts to work again, people function better. And then, so with it, with your IT system working the way that it's supposed to, we can have a great conversation here and yeah. in your body, everything in your body can have a great conversation. Everything works the way that it's supposed to, heart, lungs, liver, kidney, stomach, feet, arms, muscles, legs, everything. And then if you optimize it with performance-based care like you and I do and like you talk about a lot in the Lifestyle Locker, then you can express your full potential for 80, 90, 100 years and beyond, starting with today. And so going to the acronym for fitness, that if you wanna be fit, not just for today, but for the long haul, then it's N squared, fitness, N squared, ESS, and it's neurology, nutrition, endurance, First, because if you want to perform at the top of your game, hold on one second, have, Eric. We have a healthy nervous system. We had a little break up there, so I want you to just do the the fitness acronym. It had a little a little hiccup on the on the call, so go for it. Just do fitness one more time. Yeah. So the acronym for fitness, and we just had a little t communication breakdown. We had a IT system, right? Yeah. <laughs> you did that on purpose, man. Come on, you did that on purpose. <laughs> So it's N squared, ESS. If you want to be fit and healthy for the long haul, it's N squared, ESS, neurology, nutrition, endurance, strength, and structure. There we go. So the neurology comes first. If you want to digest properly, you need good neurology. If you want to have good endurance, your nervous system has got to be clear. If you want to be strong, you better have a healthy nerve. And if you want good structure, your nervous system has to be clear and balanced. So, so important uh, as a lifestyle locker or listener that you address the nervous system. Yeah, definitely. This is this is good. So, this is at the point where I get to say, Doctor Plasker. Um, these listeners are used to getting a couple golden nuggets or gold bars dropped of knowledge, and you've you've said we said a lot. I mean, we've covered like we've covered like you know a, a two hundred hour continuing education weekend here on on neurology and structure and function and uh, and performance. So if you were to give us three things that someone could write down, not if they're driving, but if someone can write three things down that they should take, what would they be? Love that. Um, the first thing I would say is, is set long-term goals. 
don't just set short-term goals. Set short and long-term goals. Listen, whether you like it or not, want to or not, let me say that again. Whether you like it or not, want to or not, you're probably going to live longer than you ever thought. So don't just make the short-term goals. Set those. Set those. But also set the long-term goals so that you develop a vision for your extended life. Nobody, Stephen Covey talked about in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, habit number one was begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind, not just for the next six months or a year, but think about it for the long haul. There's a lot of people that, like you're running your first marathon. Yeah. Uh, my brother, Jordan, you know him very well, yeah, lives yeah. right near you, great guy, also a chiropractor, um, great chiropractor. He's run several marathons, several Ironman. Yeah. And the thing is, is after he did the first one, he really wanted to do the second one. And then after he did the second one, he really wanted to do the third one. And how you train for today and how you address your nutrition, your spine, your nervous system, your structure, your muscles, your mind, your headspace for all of these things will determine of whether you're a one hit wonder or whether you have the opportunity to enjoy this new venture and endeavor and this challenge for the long haul. So don't just set the short term goals, set the long term goals. That's number one. Want another one? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Um, trust your innate intelligence and listen to your body. Now, this is an important distinction because for some of you, when your innate intelligence is trying to tell you something, you're a little confused between what innate is telling you and your addictions. Okay? Yeah. So there are some of you, you have this, man, I know I need to do this, but I think I need to do this. Well, one of them may be what's good for you and your body for the long haul, and one of them is an addiction, possibly. It becomes important that you start to listen to yourself and distinguish between what you know and you figure out what is the right thing for you and the best interest for you just for today and also for the long haul and the addictions. You know, if innate is saying to eat that last, co that 38th cookie, no, 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 that was an addiction. If, it, if your body was telling you, hey, you know what? Go for it. You can do it. Just slow down a little bit for a while. You know what? Listen to your body. If your body starts to tell you you need more protein, listen to it. What happens is, is, and you and I see this all the time, we start to take care of our patients, they get more in tune with what their body is really trying to tell them because oh, yeah. there's no interference in the communication with their body's communication system, that innate intelligence, that essential innervation, and the addictions. So you start to develop more of an awareness within yourself, which is really kind of exciting. So begin to listen to yourself and begin to distinguish between innate intelligence and addictions. We have a, uh, there's a, uh, a form that it's a part of the 100-year lifestyle. It's also on 100yearlifestyle.com under forms. It's called um, the personal energy inventory. And you can take a personal energy, you can go there, you can download that form and, we'll, and, and use it. It's a great exercise to begin to distinguish between energy drainers and energy gainers, things that suck your energy and make you less than your full potential and the things that give you innate energy, natural energy that support you in functioning at your highest level, thinking at your highest level. And if you take that list and you keep it with you uh, and on a you know daily basis for a while, maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, you start to eliminate the energy drainers and then make the energy gainers your new lifestyle, your new ideal 100 year lifestyle, it will really help you and put you on track to not just perform at your highest level in whatever endeavor you're achieving to do athletically, business-wise, entrepreneurially, in your job, your relationships, but also uh, to help you enjoy yourself more because a lot of the stress will go away. You'll have more fun, and uh, it's, a, it's a great exercise. Okay, good. Give me another one. Another one? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. One um, more, one more. I like this. We're, we're, we're going forward here. If you got one. I know okay. you probably got 100 in that, in that uh, 100 years. Very good. 
All right. So when it comes to your choices about how you take care of yourself, there is a healthcare hierarchy of the 100-year lifestyle that I want you to think about how you take care of yourself proactively or reactively. But there are three things in this healthcare hierarchy to think about so when you make choices for how you take care of yourself, they're important. The first is self-care. Second is health care. Third is crisis care. Okay? So self-care. These are the things that you need to do for yourself that nobody else can do for you. So nobody can breathe for you unless, of course, you play if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and you can't breathe for yourself, and then they'll hook you up to a breathing apparatus, right? You're going to have to breathe for yourself. Nobody can sleep for you. It's just something you're going to have to do for yourself. Nobody can sweat for you. It's something you're going to have to do for yourself. So take the personal responsibility to make your self-care important. So as you make your choices after listening to this and you start to organize around your body's innate intelligence and what you want to achieve short and long term, make those self-care choices that are good for you that only you can do for you. And then when it comes to health care, make the proactive choices that are good for you. Don't just wait for a crisis to force you to act. Get proactive in your health care. Don't just go get adjusted and get checked when you feel like you your back hurts. Get checked with a level of consistency as a part of a lifestyle. Don't just go to the dentist when you feel like you need to, uh, you know, when your mouth hurts. Get your teeth cleaned and have that taken care of on a regular basis and get your mouth clean and healthy. And everything related to health care, be proactive. It will make a really big difference in your longevity. And then crisis care don't just wait for that crisis. Here's an interesting question. You ready? Ready. What is the difference between personal training and cardiac rehab? When you do them. Exactly. <laughs> Timing. 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 Yeah. Timing. That's it. Yeah. It's the same thing. So make the changes that you know that you need to make and make them your new lifestyle. I'll give you one more fourth thing to think about. You ready? Ready. Okay, learn to love the things that are good for you. Right out of the 100 Year Lifestyle Second Edition. Learn to love the things that are good for you. There are so many things that we have learned to love and they're bad for us. Learn to love the things that are good for us. I remember when I was uh, in 2002, I was about 45 pounds heavier than I am now. And I remember going on a ski trip, pounding those bumps out there in Utah uh, after I decided to, you know what, I'm changing my life. I'm not losing weight. I'm changing my life. I'm getting healthy. And I walked into this hotel room. And I didn't even walk around the corner of this room. And on the bed, I knew there was a piece of chocolate on the bed. You know how I know? <laughs> it was screaming at me. <laughs> And I, and I took it, and my brothers thought I was nuts at the time, but I was committed. And I said, you know what? I grabbed that chocolate, I squished it up at the time, and I threw it in the garbage, and I said, liar. Yeah. You know, at some point, if you really want to thrive, and I do enjoy dark chocolate today, which is not bad for you. It's a really good, sweet snack. I love it. <laughs> but here's the thing. Learn to love the things that are good for you. That that's that's a take home right there. That's so good in so many ways. Uh, so we got we got four gold bars now. You um, asked for three. We always give more, my well, brother. I know that's that's good. Giving giving is where it's at. Um, so the last thing I'm going to ask you if if someone if someone listening today wants to do one thing today or tomorrow, preferably today. They can make a big difference in their life. What would you say do X? Take this action step today. Great question. And this is a kind of a funky answer to your question because everybody has something different Yeah. that's unique for them. Mm -hmm. So here's what I think is important. Every single one of you listening knows what you need to do. You know the changes that you need to make. If I were to ask you, raise your hand, even if you're driving, keep one hand on the wheel, raise your hand, if there is something that you know that you need to change. And then if I asked you and you'd raise your hand 
And then I'd say, okay, how many of you know that you've needed to make this change for at least a week or a month or a year or a decade? Raise your hand. And okay, great. Well, then make the change you know you need to make and make it your new lifestyle and don't look back. Awesome. 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 Well, Dr. Plasker, my goodness. Um, I got a page full of notes here myself. You know, I've got <laughs> scribbling everywhere here. This is great. <laughs> um, and I, I had that line, learn to love, and I've read it, learn to love the things that are good for you. I mean, that's like, forget gold, that's like a diamond. <laughs> that's that's so good. That's so good. Well, I think we're going we're gonna to finish there. We, we had a, a real high note there. Um, so thank you. I want to thank you so much personally for, for saying yes to being on the call. Um, the listeners are going to absolutely love you, and they're, they're clapping right now in the background. We can't hear them. Um, I clap for them, and <laughs> I clap you. for you. <laughs> thank you. All right. So um, for all of you listening, Dr. Plasker's information, his beautiful headshot, his websites, his links to everything we spoke about will, will be available on our show notes on the website. We're probably going to post this on Facebook as well. So f- connect with him. This is a guy you want to know for the rest of your life. Right, and you want to know his message for the rest of your life. So until next time, remember it's your life. You now have the resources to unleash your human potential. And there you have it, Locker Nation. Dr. Eric Plasker dropping knowledge bombs about the 100-year lifestyle and how you can live yours. So connect with him at 100yearlifestyle.com. Connect with him on Facebook, which you will see in the show notes connect with us at facebook.com forward slash lifestyle locker and myself personally on instagram at dr josh hand love to post some cool stuff on there one last thing we love our five star reviews so until next time locker nation be human powered